let's talk about dimensionality reduction. So here I've got a bunch of points, okay? And these points are in 2D, all right? It's called kind of green and red, but that's sort of a joke. We're not gonna worry too much about why it was done that. What you should notice is that in the middle here are these orangish yellowish points. Do you see why it's RNG? Red plus green makes sort of yellowish, or so, so along that diagonal they'd be kind of yellow. I don't know who did this originally, but it's kind of cool. All right, if you th think about these orange points, let's think about how they're distributed, okay? So they have a mean somewhere, and they've got a set of eigenvectors, right? They've got a covariance matrix that describes them. They have a axis of least inertia and then the next axis. So here you're seeing the points, the orange points are X. X bar here is supposed to be their, their mean. And then we've got the big eigenvector V1 and then the smaller one V2. And the idea is we can represent those orange points by only their V1 coordinates plus the mean. And what that would mean is, haha, essentially that we're going to think of all the orange points as just being on that line. And all I'm going to tell you is where on the line they are. And we're going to essentially ignore the amount that they're off that line. So we've just reduced the dimensions from how many? Two. To how many? One. Okay, that doesn't sound like that big a deal, nor is it. But in higher dimensions, this could be a huge deal. Imagine you've got something in 10,000 dimensional space. And yes, in just a minute, we're gonna do a 10,000 dimensional space. If you said, well, I'm gonna represent them by one number or even 30, that would be a huge reduction. So if I said, well, what direction does it vary the most in? And I just give you that value. If that's good enough for what we wanna do, you've reduced the description from being a lot of numbers to being a much smaller number. In fact, we can sort of express that here uh, algebraically in terms of just thinking about it, whatever dimension uh, X happens to be in. So if I've got a whole bunch of data points in some n-dimensional space, what I want to know is the direction of uh, projection, and let's say it's V, all right, that if I projected those points after subtracting out the mean, that I'd have the greatest amount, right, the greatest variation. And that's what that says here, right? So take x, subtract out the mean, dotted with the v, summed over all the x's, take the norm, take the square. Well, that can be written as an expression like this of just v transpose a v, where a is just this outer product, okay? That's the covariance matrix that we're, we're familiar with uh, before. And as we said before, the eigenvector with the largest eigenvalue lambda is going to be the one that captures that greatest variation. In a minute, I'll give you a little argument about why it's the eigenvector with the largest eigenvalue, uh, or you can just take my word for it. And in fact, the smallest eigenvalue would be the least amount of dimension. So basically, what we're going to have to do at some point is take the eigenvectors of this covariance matrix.